<laughs> Are you waiting for the cows to come home? Well, while you're waiting, we like to chat with you for a bit. Hi, my name is Anna Cordero. And I'm Ryan Bryan. And today we will be talking about sexual problematic behaviors in children. More specifically, we'll be looking at cognitive behavioral therapies and its effectiveness in PSPs. We will also discuss what PSPs look like, what causes them, and what the treatment is. There's no specific diagnosis for PSD in the DSM. For adults, hypersexuality, compulsive behavior, and sex addiction are often paired with PSD. When we're looking at children, anxiety, depression, and ODD are often paired with children with PSD because of their extreme mood swings. When we talk about sexual knowledge with children between the ages of zero and six, it's typical for a child to understand their own gender. At this age, they typically know the difference between boys and girls. At this age, or between this age range, they also know a little bit about birth and how that works. The knowledge that children have between the ages of zero and six is based off what they've seen and heard. One in five six-year-olds knows something about explicit sexual behavior. Moving on to sexual knowledge in children between the ages of seven and 12, the knowledge that the children have at this age on pregnancy and sex and birth all increases. Much of what they know depends on where they learn this information. Also at this age, parents tend to, have, tend to feel uncomfortable talking to their children about sex. And this often gets the, child, gets the child to learn the sexual behaviors from outside sources. With knowledge comes behavior that is typical for a child in preschool age. Preschool age is less than four years old. Some behavior that is typical within this time are exploring and touching their private parts in public or in private, rubbing their body parts with their hands or with other objects, showing their parts or their private parts to other people, trying to touch their mother's breast or other women's breast, typically it's their mother. Another behavior that is typical for preschool children is exploring and attempting to see other people naked. Asking questions about their own and other people's bodies and their bodily functions. When looking at typical sexual behavior in younger children, approximately the age range of four to six years, some typical sexual behavior would include purposefully touching their private parts, like masturbation, occasionally in the presence of others, attempting to see other people when they are naked or undressing, mimicking dating behaviors, talking about private parts and using naughty words, even if they don't understand the meaning of them, and exploring private parts with children their own age. For example, when a child says, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. When looking at school-aged children, approximately the age of 7 to 12 years, typical sexual behavior typically includes purpose, purposefully touching their private parts, such as like masturbation, uh, usually in private. Typically playing games with other children that is sexually appropriate, such as truth or dare, or playing family. Viewing and listening to sexual content in the media, such as on TV, in movies, video games, and on the internet. Wanting more privacy and being more private when talking about sexual issues with your parents. And beginning to feel sexual attraction towards members of the opposite or of the same sex. Now that Ryan has talked to you about typical sexual behaviors and knowledge in adolescence, I'd like to talk to you more about problematic sexual behaviors, how they develop, and what they look like. The child may be displaying a problematic sexual behavior if the behavior is clearly beyond 
the developmental stage of the child. For example, a three-year-old trying to kiss an adult's genitals. This would be beyond development because three-year-olds typically do not understand the function of the behavior. If the child is using force or aggression on another child to perform the sexual behavior. If there's inappropriate use of sexual body parts. For example, if a six-year-old is trying to insert a marker into their anus. If the behavior involves children from different age groups, like a 12-year-old doing a checkup with a four-year-old. If the behavior is a result of an emotional reaction, such as anger or anxiety or if the behavior interferes with the child's interests and activities. Some additional reasons a child may develop PSDs include curiosity or experimentation, impulsivity and immaturity, delinquency and aggression, psychological issues, exposure to sexual material or behaviors, sexual abuse, and problems with sexual attraction to children. And as we continue, Ryan and I will uh, discuss these in a little bit more detail. The first of many ways a PSV can develop is by curiosity or experimentation. So I think we all know that kids tend to be very curious about sex and what it entails. Um, Some will take advantage of an opportunity to find out more. So if that involves um, getting a younger child to participate, they will do that. And what adolescents know is that it's wrong that they shouldn't be doing it, and that they're going to get in trouble. What adolescents don't know is that the police might get involved, that they'll be held accountable for their actions by being put in detention, or even charged as adults with a crime. When looking at immaturity and impulsivity, research suggests that teenage boys tend to be more impulsive and more immature than girls to some degree. Some may be more impulsive and more immature than other boys. Some may have ADHD, um, which can contribute to poor judgment um, about relationships, about actions. Um, ADHD doesn't necessarily cause sexual behaviors, but it can be related to impulsive behavior and poor decision-making skills. PSVs can also develop from delinquency and aggression. Some teens have a history of delinquent behavior, um, such as physical aggression, disregard for rules, verbal confrontation, um, and oftentimes they take no responsibility for their actions. Some repeatedly engage in aggressive acts towards others. And one act can lead to multiple serious acts in the future. Additionally, psychological problems can also contribute to SVPs. Some individuals who have a sexual behavior problem may have a serious psychological uh, condition or problem, such as PTSD or depression. The mental illness itself does not actually cause the behavior, but it does affect their feelings and their judgments and choices. Uh, They may feel isolated and left out of normal age-appropriate activities or even relationships. When looking at exposure to sexually, sexual materials and behaviors, uh, it's easy for children to have access to highly sexualized materials, such as movies, TV, music, and the internet. Some teens also live in highly sexualized environments, um, which if, if it's their parents who are frequently engaged in sexual behavior with a partner or maybe nude around the house, um, that that behavior can also affect the adolescent. PSVs can also develop from sexual abuse or maltreatment. Some adolescents have been sexually abused either either recently, um, the abuse is ongoing, or it's just a past event that has occurred. Since there's not much research out there on PSV, The research that is out there is conflicting. Some research indicates that children with PSB are about 8 to 12 percent likely to be victims of sexual abuse. Other research also indicates that 49 to 80 percent of individuals with PSB have been sexually abused. When looking at problems with sexual attraction to children, it is rare, but it can still be seen. There is a small number of individuals with PSB who are attracted to children rather than 
children of their own age or their fellow peers. If this is the case, then the child may be developing pedophilia. That is defined as intense sexual arousal, arousal to children 13 years or younger. Uh, the person must be at least 16 years of age um, and at least five years older than the child um, that they are victimizing. Um, only a qualified professional should make this diagnosis if, diagnosis if it, it is the case. This chart represents a more whole understanding about how PSBs develop. Much like other disorders, there can be several factors that contribute to the development of a PSB. Just to recap this bit of information that we shared with you, PSBs are not diagnosable, but they can be identified with the right information. Sexual knowledge and behavior for each age group can vary quite significantly, uh, and PSBs can develop from many different experiences or other issues. When looking at assessments, there is no specific criteria for diagnosing an individual with PSB. Some assessments may need to be given to a child uh, that is displaying PSB behavior. Some of these assessments include the child behavior, or I'm sorry, the child sexual behavior inventory or the CSBI. There's also the child sexual behavior checklist or the CSBCL and the Weekly Behavior Report, or the WBR. The first assessment that I would like to go over is the Child Sexual Behavior Inventory, or the CSBI. This is a self-report assessment, and it is used for children ages 2 to 12 and that may have been sexually abused. There are nine major components to this assessment, or nine areas of context domains which include boundary issues, gender roles, I'm sorry, gender role behaviors, sexual interest, sexual knowledge, exhibitionism, self-stimulation, sexual in intrusiveness, voyeuristic behavior, and sexual anxiety. This assessment is also written at a fifth grade level, and the mother takes the assessment based off of the child's behavior. The final assessment I would like to address is the Weekly Behavior Report, or the WBR. This assessment tracks week-to-week -week changes in general and sexual behavior in children and in adults. A major question on the mind of parents and professionals alike is if children with PSBs will grow up to become sex offenders. Research shows that children who receive treatment have a high success rate, and the reoffense rate is anywhere between 2 to 14 percent, compared to the 8 to 58 percent for other delinquent behaviors. Overall, there is not a clear link between PSBs and sexual offense in adulthood. The treatment we will be discussing today is called PSB CBTS, which stands for Problematic Sexual Behavior, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy in School Age Children. With very little research to go off of, there are few treatment or treatment manuals available for providers. Some research suggests using multi-systemic therapy, um, and it tends to be effective to, to a point. Um, however, the most efficacious treatment uh, seems to be a form of CBT, um, hence the PSB. Um, this specific treatment manual we will be covering it was created at the University of Oklahoma Health and Sciences Center and is based on several different research articles. Some more specifics about this treatment include um, it is a short-term outpatient evidence-based treatment for children with problematic sexual behaviors. Um, it's family-oriented, cognitive behavioral-based, um, psychoeducational, and supportive treatment group designed to reduce or eliminate incidents of problematic sexual behaviors in children. The group uh, consists of six to eight children with sexual problematic behaviors. Um, the age group is school age, so it is seven to 12. Um, there is a separate group for caregivers, typically 10 to 18 adults, um, that meets while the children are meeting as well. Um, typically, they like to have one to two clinicians for each group, and the sessions are typically 18 ongoing sessions. 
In this treatment, there are several key components to both the child and the caregiver sessions. Um, these include rules about sexual behaviors and boundaries, abuse prevention skills and safety planning, emotional regulation and coping skills, impulse control and problem solving skills, developmentally appropriate sexual education, se social skills and peer relationships, and acknowledgement of sexual behavior, apology, and acceptance. Some additional key components that may be added to the caregiver sessions include behavior parent training to prevent and respond to PSDs and other behavior problems, general child development with emphasis on psychological and emotional changes, dispelling misconceptions regarding PSDs and implications for the child, communicating with children about sexual behavior and development, and supporting children's use of coping and decision Another type of treatment that we would like to talk about is TFCBT, or Trauma-Focused Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. This type of therapy has been effective in treating children with PTSD when it comes to PSP. TFCBT is a structured, short-term treatment model that effectively improves a range of trauma-related outcomes in 8 to 24 sessions with the child and adolescent and caregivers. Some research has been done to show that CBT for SBPs is very efficacious. One article by Bonner et al. used 253 participants ages 6 to 12. Children with SBPs were randomly assigned to dynamic play treatment or CBT. In a one to two year follow-up, SBPs in both groups decreased significantly but there is no significant difference between the treatments. Basically, one treatment didn't show to be more effective than the other. The authors explained that they couldn't have a control group due to ethical reasons. In a follow-up study, Carpentier et al. used the same participants and followed up with them 10 years later. They compared the groups again and found that the CBT group had significantly fewer sex offenses than the play therapy group. The CBT group didn't differ from the group of children with no SVPs. That means that the children who originally had sexually problematic behaviors did not differ from children who didn't have SVPs. So just to recap some important information that we just went over. There are several different types of assessments that can measure PSB. There's no significant connection between PSB and future reinvences. PSB CBT is structured and has several components. TFCBT can also be used if the child has experienced some form of trauma. And there is sufficient evidence to suggest that CBT for PSB is efficacious. Now that we've covered the basics of SVPs and the efficacy of CBT in treating those SVPs, we'd like to talk to you more about the implementation of treatment. When teaching children rules and boundaries, the best way to teach them is with simple examples, such as don't touch a hot stove, don't run across the street, hold your mother's hand while walking in the parking lot. When in a therapy session, one good question to ask the child is, what are some typical rules and boundaries that your mother and father have set for you? The preschool age rules are very simple and easy for the child to understand. The sexual behavior rules for school age children have a little bit more information in them to ensure the child understands completely. Some of these sexual behavior rules for school-aged children include, it is not okay to show your private parts to other people. It is not okay to look at another person's private parts. It is not okay to touch another person's private parts. It is not okay to use sexual language or make other people uncomfortable with your sexual behavior. And lastly, it is okay to touch your private parts as long as it's in the privacy of your own home. 
The hula hoop game is a great way to have the children in the group interact and to learn about boundaries at the same time. The hula hoop game is kind of like a game of stop and go. You'll have one child with a hula hoop stand in the middle of the room. You'll have name tags for a mom, a dad, a stranger, a friend, and a teacher. Five other children from the group will have these name tags on and will slowly start walking towards the student with the hula hoop until the person in the hula hoop says to stop. This means that the child in the hula hoop is determining where they feel comfortable and is setting proper boundaries. Because child abuse can be largely prevented by parent involvement, this section is important to discuss, uh, which is abuse prevention skills and safety planning, uh, to discuss with, in detail with the caregiver group. Tasks like monitoring their child, communicating rules and expectations, um, and discussing acceptable conversations to have with the child um, is also discussed in the group. Parents also need to learn to feel comfortable in talking to their child about body parts, and they need to learn to use proper or scientific names um, and not pay wee wee or something similar to that. Um, the underwear rule is a great way to talk to the children about how to know when someone is possibly violating them. Discussing abuse prevention with kids involves making sure that they know what constitutes abuse. Um, this includes discussing what a safe and an unsafe touch is, um, and also reviewing the sexual behavior rules discussed in um, what Ryan was talking about. The kids also need to learn the correct action to take if someone is attempting to touch or hurt them and what they would do in that situation. The My Underpants Rule Book by Kate and Rod Power is a great tool to use when discussing the private parts rule. There are several ways you can go about discussing this with the group by either reading a book of this nature, watching videos, or having the group interact to show that they understand where they are not supposed to be touched. The next segment covers emotional regulation and coping skills. Uh, discussing emotional regulation is important to treatment as many children perform problematic sexual behaviors due to the inability to control their reactions to their emotions. Talking to the group about emotions and why we need to control them and how to do that is key. The RAIN acronym can be useful in identifying emotions and questioning them before the child reacts. This goes hand in hand with the impulse control segment of the treatment. The R in RAIN means recognizing when, what they're feeling, the A means allowing the emotion to be there. I means to investigate that feeling with kindness in order to try to understand it. And lastly, the N means non-identification or realizing that the emotion does not define you as a person. Common coping skills can be taught to children, such as deep breathing. For instance, the breathing square is a wonderful technique to use with children because it, it allows them to understand to how to deep breathe. Um, so with the breathing scare, square, the child will breathe in for four, hold their breath for four, breathe out for four, and hold it, their breath again for four. This helps to um, regulate their emotions and to calm themselves in a time where they might be reactive. When talking about impulse control and problem solving skills with children, one great way to address impulse control and problem solving skills is with the STOP method. The STOP method is an acronym that stands for STOP, relax and calm down. The T stands for think about what you should do. The O stands for observe and explore choices for your response. And the P stands for plan your response. When transitioning from impulse control to problem-solving skills, there are many similarities. Talking about problem-solving skills include identifying the problem, think about solutions, think about what will happen if you do this and how it will make other children feel, and try the solution. One way to increase a child's sexual knowledge is by developmentally appropriate sexual education. What this would consist of is comprehensive sex education that begins in kindergarten and expands through their academic career 
through senior year or 12th grade. Some of the topics that are discussed during this time are human development, relationships, sexual behavior, sexual health, society and cultural norms. These types of topics can assist in a child growing into a healthy sexual being. Here is an illustration of the female reproductive system. As you can see, we have the uterus, the fallopian tubes, the ovary, the cervix, and the vagina. This is the illustration of the male reproductive system. As you can see, there's the seminal vesicle, the prostate gland, the vas deferens, the scrotum, the testicle, and the epididymis. These illustrations assist in educating children about their bodies. <laughs> Another part of the training teaches the children how to build social skills and what healthy peer relationships consist of. The first step is to discuss what friendship looks like and what a healthy friendship consists of. The last piece of the manual covers acknowledging the behaviors the children have done and making amends for them. One exercise a child can do is writing a letter to the person that they broke a sexual behavior rule with. The letter includes them acknowledging the behavior was wrong and letting the individual know uh, what they are doing to prevent that behavior or other behaviors from um, happening in the future. It can also be useful for the parents to write a letter to their child letting them know that they recognize how hard they're working um, in order to further encourage the kids in the treatment. So to recap some important information, make sure to set boundaries with both the child and the parent. It's important that the child understands that they have control over their own body. Also to feel prepared to prevent and stop abuse. And to deal with intense emotions in a very healthy way. And also to gain knowledge about your sexual body as a boy or a girl. And that the child builds healthy relationships with their peers and to acknowledge what they did wrong and how to properly address that. And now we hope that you've had a better knowledge of problematic sexual behavior. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Hannah Cordero. And I'm Ryan Bright. And today we will be talking about problematic sexual behaviors in children. More specifically, we'll be looking at cognitive behavioral therapy. When looking at oh, some PSBs, uh... <laughs> the first step to discuss friendship looks like what well, <laughs> <laughs> oh. important information that we just went over. Uh, how are you doing today, Hannah? <laughs> 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 I, heard my, I heard my stomach growl and I was like...